Hello Android users, great news. Today I'm going to do an unboxing review and how to root video for the Oyuku M63 10.1 inch Android 4.4 tablet. This features the all winner A33 quad core processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of ROM, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There's also an expandable SD slot up to 64 gigs. Now, the Oyuku has several tablets that are pretty much this exact same configuration that have different memory configurations, and they're all sub $100 tablets, so these are pretty much the cheapest tablet you can get. Let's take a look, unbox it, and see what you get. Here's the unboxing. There's absolutely nothing on the outside of the box to identify it. You have to look at the sticker on the outside plastic to find out it's the M63. It doesn't tell you any specs of the actual tablet, which is a little worrisome, so you gotta kind of cross your fingers and hope it's what you paid for. Absolutely nothing else on that box. It's totally plain, so super generic. A lot of different configurations of this tablet. Let's find out what's inside. Inside the box, we find a little foam. The tablet wrapped up in a lot of plastic. There's going to be sticky cellophane all over that, keeping it from getting scratched. That looks nice and shiny. We'll peel that off a little later. Underneath we find the various adapters. Now this one came with, I guess, a European adapter, which is no good for me in North America. Yeah, they just, that's it, that's what you get. And there's a, a micro USB cable, which is pretty good, because it also comes with an OTG cable. You can plug that adapter in and put in a controller or a mouse or some other device, so that's pretty handy. And the instruction manual was decent. You can read it, it's in English. It's somewhat understandable, yeah, not bad. I'll take it. And a little warning to charge the thing for eight hours if you really need to be reminded to actually charge it. And I'll just rip off that plastic and take a look at the exterior. Now my tablet actually arrived cracked in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, it was actually kind of cracked open. I was able to just kind of snap it back into place. So that's a little thing to be noted. Now it has a crappy camera on the back and the front. There's dual speakers, which are okay, not very loud. There's a power button, and there's also a refresh button, which just pretty much confuses you with which one is the power button. And of course, the expandable SD card. All in all, pretty generic. Let's turn it on. The first time you boot your tablet up, you'll need to log into the Play Store and your email and all that. I've already got mine all set up in case you're wondering. I'm using the Go Launcher EX, a custom launcher that lets me change the appearance of my tablet and it lets me add these little docks on the side, make folders. And I've even got a widget along the top that shows the available memory out of the two gigabytes of memory and can quickly clear that out. It's quite handy to have. Now we're just going to check out the settings. Go from the top right and swipe down. Then click on settings. You'll note that I'm actually using a Bluetooth controller here because I've got it uh, set up. Scroll all the way down, go to about tablet, and here we can find all the specific information. Now the tablet model number is actually called V11. That's the name of the tablet. It's a quad core A33 processor, Android 4.4.2, 2.0 firmware, 3.4 kernel, and the ROM build is called A Star. Another good feature of this tablet is that it comes with the Play Store by default and you get all the access to all the Google apps and games and all that great stuff. Some tablets actually don't come with it and you need to add it on later or use a third party market kind of app. So it's great to have it actually come with it. Now I'm going to open up N22 Benchmark and look at the actual performance of our tablet with a nice quantifiable score that we can compare to other devices. The M63 tablet, known as Device ID V11 here, scores about 15,000 in N22 Benchmark version 6. Now this is a decent score for basic productivity, surfing the web, going on YouTube and playing a few games. I compare this directly to other devices I own. The first generation HP touchpad also scores a very similar 15,000. And the Google Nexus 7, also a first generation device, scores about 18,000 on this exact same test. So that gives you a reasonable idea that it's a very low end tablet, but it has decent performance for basic productivity. The biggest downside of the tablet isn't the performance, but the actual screen itself. Compared to the other tablets mentioned, which have excellent screens, this tablet has a terrible, painful to look at screen when you view it from the side. Here you can see it straight on as I play some Plants vs. Zombies 2, 
but if you actually pick the tablet up or try to view it from other angles, it looks pretty washed out and terrible. If you're going to watch YouTube videos with friends or try to show people things on this tablet, it looks pretty bad. You pretty much got to have it mounted with a stand and use it straight on. The second you pick it up or move it around, it really ruins the experience with the washed out kind of blurry picture you're going to see. The poor screen quality is definitely the biggest downside to the tablet and you'll feel like zombies ate your brains too. Now to go over the final stats of the device, there's a 1024 by 600 resolution screen, the Mali 400 GPU which you just saw in action on the game. There's some terrible resolution cameras, so we're not even going to look at those. Now one of the best things about this tablet is the 2 gigabytes of available memory. This is great for multitasking and productivity. All the first gen tablets I mentioned only come with 1 gig, so it's really great to see 2 gigs in a very low budget tablet like this. Now for some not so good news. You'll notice here that the system storage and internal storage are separate locations. Ideally this should be the same location because your apps and all your data should be in the same location unless this is an older non-data media build. Which means you have only 2 gigabytes the system storage here to store your applications. So that's going to run out eventually, you're going to find that you can't install any more apps or you won't be able to update apps. I already ran into a problem where Clash of Clans wasn't able to update because this ran out of space. So basically you'll have to uninstall some apps. It can be a bit of a problem. Now there's no way really to fix this. They'll need to update the ROM so that it is a data media ROM. On other devices you'll see that the system storage and the internal storage are the same. Now the tablet comes with the all winner A33 quad core processor, 32 bit processor. Now you'll notice here under frequency that this processor only clocks between 120 and 1200 megahertz. Now some unscrupulous sellers have said that it goes over that but it does not. So I've actually checked that out and you can see here right from the report that it doesn't go over that. Even once I rooted the device I could not overclock it which is due to the kernel which will not allow for this to happen. Now we're going to look at the battery capacity and health with a handy app battery monitor widget. In the listing for this tablet it said the battery capacity should be 6500 mAh which is great for a tablet the same as my HP touchpad. The problem is when I actually opened it up and checked with this application it only had 3775 so that was nearly half of what it was listed at and when I checked other tablets there was quite a range anywhere 4000, 4500, 5000 even up to 6500 mAh. So these may be fraudulent, you may want to contact the seller before purchasing and ask to see a screenshot with an app like this to make sure that you're actually getting the capacity you're paying for. So this is a big downside to find out you're actually getting a much smaller battery. In terms of battery health, the deep sleep rating is around minus 30 MA, which is half decent, I'd say average for a tablet. A really good, well-supported tablet like the HP TouchPad will get down as low as minus 6 with random spiking. During daily use, you're going to go anywhere from 500 to 1000 depending on what you're doing and if you're playing games. So it was fairly average in terms of battery life, but the capacity was way overvalued. Now we're going to root the device. The first thing we're going to need to do is swipe from the top of the tablet and go to the settings menu. In the settings menu scroll down and look for the security tab. Click on the security tab and scroll down till you find unknown sources. Now we need to put a little check mark here to allow us to install the rooting application and any other application from an APK file. The next step we're going to go to the Play Store and use the Dolphin browser. I highly recommend getting this browser. It's one of the best Android browsers around. Open it up and we're going to go to kingroot.net and here is a rooting app called Kingroot and you can do it directly from the device. You're just going to download an APK file and install it. And it works like that. There's a few other applications that come along with it, but mostly the rooting feature is what we want. So go to the page. Everything's in the video's description, of course. Just look down there. We're going to download it directly to the device. Now to see notifications, we swipe down from the left hand side. That's where our notification for the download will be coming up. I've already downloaded it once there. Doesn't take that long. And then load it up. Now we're going to install the app just takes a moment and we need to open it up and authorize the rooting. When we do this the orientation is going to switch a little so prepare yourself. It forces it to be in portrait mode. Once the app starts for the first time just click these little arrows to get by it. 
we have to try out their Purify app, which we'll also install. We can uninstall that later. And it's going to check our root status for our device. Here it says root access is unavailable currently, but there is a root strategy available, so just try it. So now we're going to click try to root and just wait for the counter to get to 100%. Now this could take anywhere 5 to 10 minutes, so be patient and don't do anything with the device. Now I've reached 100% successfully and we've been rooted. Now we go to the main King Root app page and under root authorization, we can see a list of all the apps we're going to authorize with root permissions. Here we are in root checker. We're just gonna click a verify root and it's gonna check our device. Now, anytime an app needs root permissions, it'll pop up this little menu here and it'll ask you to allow or deny the app the root permission. So in this case, we're gonna allow it, click allow. And there we go, we verified our root status is functioning properly. The device is now rooted for any rooted apps you want to try out, enjoy it. If you have any trouble with this particular rooting app, look for links for other rooting apps that also install via APK, such as vRoots. In conclusion, the M63 tablet looks good online, but its poor screen quality, limited app storage, and small battery capacity can really hurt the value. The performance level of this device is best compared to first generation tablets. I'd recommend this tablet as an introductory device for someone looking to try Android for the first time or perhaps a present for your kids who may or may not like the device, might break it accidentally or may end up just putting it on a shelf and forgetting about it. If you do happen to like this tablet, you'll know what you like and you'll pay a little more for something a little better and you'll be quite a bit happier with it. I'd rate this tablet 2.5 out of 5 stars. The user experience was okay, but the screen was unacceptable. In addition, be careful when purchasing these tablets. Some unscrupulous sellers will list the wrong information and you may get stuck with a lesser device than what you paid for. Please like the video and subscribe if you found this review, unboxing, and how to root video helpful. Thanks for watching, everybody.